Okay, so today we're going to be making a fixed projector screen for our media area. When we're finished, this is what the screen should look like. We recently installed this projector on the ceiling, and even though the image it produces is good quality, it could be improved with the screen. For this, we're going to need some 1x4 dimensional lumber, of which length varies on the size of your screen. We'll also need some Carl's blackout cloth, 2 inch felt tape, a saw, in this case we're going to be using a miter saw, a pocket hole jig, some pocket hole screws, a staple gun, and extra staples. If your stapler is an air tool, you'll also need some type of air compressor. So this is the display from the projector on the wall without a screen. To determine the exact size of it, we used blue painter's tape to mark all four of the corners. Doing it this way means we can measure the screen size without having the projector on, which simplifies the measuring process dramatically. Make sure to be accurate with this process. After you've taken your measurements, make sure to jot them down so you won't forget them. Remember that your frame in the end will need to be 2 inches larger on every side for the black felt tape. Also, 1x4 dimensional wood is actually 3 inches by 3 quarters inch, so your length pieces will need to be 7 inches shorter than the height of your frame to accommodate for the width of the wood. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of math and double check your work because it might end up saving you when you actually start making the screen. Make sure to make a detailed design of your frame layout because it'll make things less complicated when assembling the frame. A download link for this image will be down in the description in case anybody needs it. Now it's time to actually start cutting the wood. I'm going to be cutting two pieces 226.5 inches for the top and bottom lengths of the screen and four pieces 266 inches for the height of the screen. After your wood is cut up, start drilling two pocket holes on each end of the shorter wooden pieces. At this point, it's time to transfer all your supplies to the final build location. It's important to assemble your frame at the build site because transporting a fully built screen can be difficult. Then lay out the wooden pieces to form the shape of the screen's frame. If you imagine that these dashed lines are the studs in your wall and the red lines are the frame, then you want to make sure that the place where you put the middle supports for the frame isn't where your studs are because that's where we're going to be hanging the frame on the wall. In real life, to do this, Go to the wall where your tape is laid out. Measure the distance from the edge of the screen's position to the closest stud. Now transfer that distance back to your frame. Your middle supports of the frame shouldn't be there. Now it's time to start connecting the pieces together. Start with the corners first by applying glue to the pieces, then clamping them together from their faces. You could also use a 90 degree clamp if you have one. Then take pocket hole screws and screw the pieces together. Now repeat this process for all four corners. After the corners are done, it's time to do the sides. This is almost the exact same process, but just make sure that everything lines up properly on both ends and that everything's all square. Okay, so now that your frame has been constructed, it's time to stretch the blackout cloth around it. The first step is to lay the frame on the back of the cloth so the good side is facing down. Make sure that the ground surface is nice and clean. Then stretch the cloth gently to remove any trapped wrinkles. Our cloth was much larger than we needed, so we decided to cut it. To do this, we folded the cloth along the creases in the fabric, then glided a pair of sharp scissors through. Then we started stretching and stapling the cloth to the frame. We started from the middle of one of the long sides and shot a staple through. Then we went to the other side, stretched the fabric, and did the same thing. We repeated this on the short sides, then started building off of that. 
Make sure not to get any wrinkles trapped while stapling and keep the staples no farther than 2 inches apart. Take your time and the screen will turn out nicely. Once your sides are mostly done, you'll have to staple the corners down too. To do this, fold the longer flap over the shorter one and keep it tight. Then shoot the first staple as close to the corner as possible. Then extend your way down to keep the flap secure. If we go to the front of the screen now, it's time to add the felt tape. Keep the tape lined up with the edge of the screen and be patient. Now it's time to find where to add the screws in the wall to hang the screen. To get the exact location for this, go to one of the top corners and measure 2 inches higher than it. This is because we made the frame 2 inches bigger on every side for the felt tape. Then measure 3.5 inches lower than that because our frame is made from wood that's 3.5 inches tall. Then from that point, go along the latitude until you get to a stud. This is where you want the screw to go. Then repeat this on the other side. Then hang your screen up on the screws and line it up with the projector's display. And now you're done! Please leave a like and do make sure to subscribe if you want to see similar content in the future.